A beautiful and healthy day to all of you. I'm Dr. Vicky Manuel, a neurologist and clinical nutrition specialist. This CD is meant to help you, our patients and caregivers, in maintaining your health and well-being after stroke. Simply lang ang message natin. There is life after a stroke. And with proper diet and a healthy lifestyle, you can have a better quality of life. This CD aims to give you nutritional support. And that is why our team is here to give you simple and very easy to follow tips on living well. We have the Clinical Nutrition Manager of St. Luke's Medical Center, Dietitian Ruby Frane, to give you valuable tips on how to eat healthy diets. And one of the country's top chefs, Chef Toby Lee Barnes, to demonstrate heart-healthy meals that you can prepare for yourself or your patients. This CD is interactive. The topics of interest to our patients and caregivers may be chosen from the menu. However, you must view the CD in its entirety for the first time. Panoorin po ninyo ng buo. We will be tackling the diet of two kinds of patients. The ambulatory patient who is able to move around after stroke and the bedridden patient with difficulty in swallowing who must undergo tube feeding. We hope that you keep the CD handy and that you follow what is contained in this video. There is life after stroke and this video will help stroke patients in achieving a better quality of life with proper nutrition. Thank you very much. Hi, Doc. Mataas daw ang blood sugar ko. Nasa lahi kasi namin. Yung nanay ko nga na-paralyzed. Mangyayari din kaya yun sa akin? Diabetes or high blood sugar increases the risk for stroke by up to four times. It increases stroke risk by increasing the severity of hardened arteries and by damaging small blood vessels and nerves. Heredity has a very strong role in the development of diabetes, but this may be prevented by proper diet and exercise. Nagkakaroon ng pagbabara ng mga ugat sa utak, puso, bato, mata, at iba bang parte ng katawan sa mga taong may diabetes. Dahil dito, mataas ang posibilidad na ang may mga diabetes ay magkakastroke or heart attack. Madalas sumakit ang bato ko. Sabi nila magkakastroke daw ako. Totoo ba yun? Isang karaniwang simptoma ng high blood pressure ay ang pananakit ng bato. Ngunit maraming pasyente ang may hypertension subalit walang nararamdaman. Ito ang mga tinatawag na silent hypertensives. It is important to have your blood pressure checked regularly. High blood pressure or hypertension is a leading risk factor for stroke. Payat naman ako, di ba? Pero nung nagpa-check up ako, sabi ng doktor, mataas daw ang kolesterol ko. Pwede ba yun? Kahit ganito ang katawan ko, baka nagkamali sila. Pwede rin ba akong magka-stroke? Obesity and high cholesterol levels increase stroke risk. However, a lean physique does not always indicate a normal or low blood cholesterol level. It is best to undergo laboratory tests to check for cholesterol level. Maaring katamtaman lang ang inyong timbang, subalit mataas ang kolesterol sa dugo. Ito ay magiging sanhi ng pagbabara ng mga ugat sa puso at utak. Kaya ang stroke or atake sa utak ay maaring tumama sa mataba o sa payat. You can lower your stroke risk by keeping your blood sugar, blood pressure, and cholesterol on target by meal planning, physical activity, and medication. Hello ladies and gentlemen, this portion of the video will answer your questions regarding proper nutrition for ambulatory patients. I'm Ruby Fran. Your doctor has prescribed you diabetic diet, 1,800 calories, at the same time, Heart's Delight. Ma'am, what is Heart's Delight? Okay. Heart's Delight is a combination of diet that is low in cholesterol content, sodium, and saturated fats. Ma'am, what are saturated fats po? It is a type of fat that you usually found in animal sources. Example of this are the, the fat that you found in meat, bacon, and butter. 
Miss Franny, may tanong ko lang. Masama ba yung prito? Hindi naman talaga, hindi naman po talaga masama ang frying. Especially po if you've used healthy oils. The reason why we want to limit po is because we want to control the total fat po sa diet. What do you think is the best oil we should use? Olive oil is considered the best type of oil okay, because it has 80% saturated fats and very little amount of saturated and polyunsaturated fats. What method of cooking would you recommend? I would recommend cooking with less oil. So usually, we suggest that you go more on steaming, grilling, roasting, or even poaching. What is cholesterol? There are two types of cholesterol. One is dietary cholesterol, which comes from the food that we eat and usually from animal sources. The other one is the blood cholesterol, which is manufactured in our liver. The excess cholesterol that comes from food is, is the one that we don't want because they are the one that forms the plaque buildup in the arteries. Okay, and this is the one that increases the risk of developing um, cardiovascular diseases, cancer, and stroke. By the way, what is LDL? Madalas ko kasing naririnig ito eh. LDL is what we call low-density lipoprotein. It's a type of cholesterol. Um, they are called the bad cholesterol because they are the one that forms the plaque buildup in the arteries. What are the foods high in LDL that I need to avoid? Animal fats which contain saturated fatty acids can increase your blood cholesterol level. So limit your intake of food items coming from animal sources. Is he allowed to eat egg? Kasi favorite niya yun eh. Hindi naman po bawal ang egg. Pero preferably, we would recommend to use only egg whites because the cholesterol is concentrated in the yolk. What is sodium? Is sodium and salt the same? Sodium is a mineral that is found in many foods. Salt is a sodium chloride and is about 40% sodium, so they're not the same. Now, there are what we call inherited sodium. This inherited sodium is what you usually found in unprocessed foods, like for example, fruits and vegetables. Salt, on the other hand, is a preservative that is commonly added to processed foods. So we suggest to limit food items which are processed. How much salt is too much? The recommended um, sodium intake per day is about 2,000 milligrams, especially if you have kidney problem, heart disease, and stroke. What are the typical foods high in sodium? In general, processed food have the most sodium and unprocessed food have the least. Example of processed food are canned goods okay, and cured meats. Why is it important for me to follow a meal plan? In following a meal plan, you're assured that you're getting the right food in right amount. And this is based on your actual requirements per day. What will happen if I don't finish my food? Not finishing your food would mean you're not getting adequate amount of nutrients. And in prolonged period, you might experience weight loss. How important is it to eat a variety of food? Eating a variety of food would mean you'll get all the adequate nutrients your body needs. And remember, no single food items has all the nutrients. Here are the guides, sir, that you will be needing at home. Thank you very much. You're welcome, sir. We'll take care of Ruben. Thank you for. You're welcome, ma'am. Okay, and if you have any clarifications, my name is there, and the telephone number is at the back of the diet list. Thank, Thank you. you. So, this is a sample meal plan based on a diabetic diet, 1,800 calories per day, divided into three meals and two snacks. So the 1,800 calories is converted into the different serving portions per food group. So these would be your major food groups. The rice bread and bread group, the meat group, the vegetable group, the fruit group, the milk group, and the fat group. The number beside it would be your total servings for the whole day per food group. 
So for the rice and bread group, you have a total of eight servings. For the meat group, you have the, a total of four servings. For the vegetable, you have four. For fruit, you have three. For milk, you have two. And for fat, you have eight. The total servings for the rice and bread group, for example, is distributed from breakfast till dinner. For the, uh, the total servings of eight is distributed, distributed from breakfast till dinner. So for breakfast, you have two servings. For AM snack, you have one serving. For lunch, you have two servings. For PM snack, you have one serving. And for dinner, you have two servings, a total of eight servings for the rice and bread group. And for the meat group, you have a total of four servings for the whole day. So for breakfast, you have two servings. For lunch, you have one. And for dinner, you have one. For the vegetable group, you have two servings for lunch and two servings for dinner. So you will have four servings for the whole day. So for the fruit group, you have one serving for breakfast, one serving for AM snack, and one serving for PM snack. For milk, you have one serving for breakfast and another serving for PM snack, which will total to two servings. As your fat exchange, you have three servings for breakfast, three servings for lunch, and two servings for dinner, which will total eight servings. After distributing the serving portions, we will now interpret the number of serving based on the food items. So food groups is seen as sidewards and uh, meal is seen as downwards. So for breakfast, two servings of rice or bread group is equivalent to four pieces of bread. Two servings of meat will be equivalent to four tablespoons of tuna. One serving of fruit is one piece of banana. One serving of milk is four tablespoons of milk. And three servings of fat is three teaspoons of vegetable oil. For AM snack, one serving is equivalent to one cup of oatmeal and one serving of fruit is equivalent to one fourth cup of juice. For lunch, two servings of rice or bread group is equivalent to one cup of rice, one serving of meat is one piece of chicken, two servings of vegetable is equivalent to one cup of vegetable if it is non-leafy, and two cups of vegetable if it is leafy because of the light volume of the vegetable. Three servings of fat is equivalent to three teaspoons of vegetable oil. For PM snack, you have one serving of rice and bread group, which is equivalent to eight small pieces of crackers. A serving of fruit is equivalent to one fourth cup of juice, and a serving of milk is equivalent to half cup of yogurt. For dinner, two servings of rice and bread group is equivalent to one cup of rice. One serving of meat is equivalent to one slice of fish. Two servings of vegetable is equivalent to one cup of vegetable. If it is non-leafy and two cups of vegetable, if it is leafy, Two servings of fat is equivalent to two teaspoons of vegetable oil. So now, I will teach you how to substitute the food items using your food exchange list. So note that one serving is not always one cup, it varies. So the groupings here in your food exchange list is patterned according to the groupings in your sample meal plan. So you have here the vegetable group, the fruit group, the milk group, the rice group, the meat group, and the fat group at the back. When substituting food items, you only have to remember two things when substituting food items 
in your sample meal plan. So for the rice group, your bread can be substituted for rice, lugao, noodles, cornflakes, or crackers. For your meat group, your fish can be substituted to chicken, lean cuts of pork and beef, and seafoods. For your vegetable, you could have it cooked or as salad. For fruit, you can eat the fruit itself or you can drink juice. For milk, you can have it as powdered milk, liquid milk, or yogurt. For fat, we prefer oil from plant sources such as corn oil, canola oil, vegetable oil, and olive oil. While some patients are unable to swallow after suffering stroke, there are some who are able to swallow but with some difficulty. In order to make feeding easier and to avoid complications such as aspiration pneumonia, modifications may be made in the consistency of the food. For stroke patients experiencing difficulty in swallowing, the medical doctor usually requests for dysphagia screening. There are four levels of dysphagia diet based on the patient's ability to swallow. Level 1 are pureed foods. Foods are pureed to a smooth mashed potato-like consistency. The addition of a thickening or thickening agent to the pureed food can help keep their shape for presentation purposes. The thickening agent is used to slow down the swallowing process, making the liquid easier to manage and the patient less likely to aspirate. Thickening agents may be available in major drugstores. Level 2 are minced foods. Foods in this group are minced to very small pieces, about 1 8 inch, similar to the size of sesame seed. Examples for hot food, flaked fish, minced meat, and vegetables. For cold foods, mashed banana, minced canned fruit. Level 3 are ground foods. Food in this group are ground or diced into 1 4th inch pieces. These are similar to the size of cooked rice. Examples for hot food, ground meatballs, and ground baked potatoes without the skin. For cold foods, crushed pineapple and smooth fruit yogurt. Level 4 are chopped foods. The food in this group are chopped into one half inch pieces similar to uncooked elbow macaroni or croutons. Examples for hot foods, chopped meat or chicken, and scrambled eggs. For cold food, milkshakes. This time, we shall focus on proper nutrition for patients requiring tube feeding. I'm Ruby Frane. Good afternoon, Ma'am De La Cruz. I'm Ruby Po. I'm a clinical dietitian. I'm here to give diet instruction po. Your doctor has prescribed po her diet, and that is 1,800 calories um, divided into six equal feeding. Okay, I'm here para po once na makauwi po kayo, you know what to prepare and how to prepare the food. Ma'am, ano po ba yung mas maganda nating gamitin? Liquid or powdered formula? Either one um, you can use whether powdered or liquid. Um, pero we will suggest kung ano sana yung ginagamit niya ngayon dito sa hospital, yun na rin ang gamitin niya sa bahay because we want to see optimal tolerance. At least dito, na-try na natin. Ma'am, ano po ba yung advisable nating gagawin? Yung titimplahin buong araw o yung every feeding? Okay, freshly prepared formula is best, okay, lalo na kung meron talagang available na gagawa. Pero kung hindi naman, it can be divided into two, isa sa umaga, isa sa hapon. Gano po ba tatagal ang shelf life ng premix formula? Tatagal ang isang premix formula mo um, within 24 hours. So pag lumagpas ng 24 hours, you have to discard yung formula na to at magtimpla ka na uli. Ma'am, ano ba yung mga kailangan gamit sa paghahanda ng formula? Okay, kakailangan ninyo po ng blender. Okay, sa po yung tinatawag natin calibrated glasses. Ito po yung may mga nakamarka kung gano'n po kadami. 
Okay? At saka po, um, funnel or yung embudo para po pag na natin yung formula, hindi naman po matapon. Ma'am, sa pagtitimpla ho ba, ano ba kailangan tubig? Malamig ho ba o mainit? Sa pagtitimpla po ng formula, it doesn't have to be hot and it doesn't have to be cold. Kahit po room temperature lang po yung water natin. Um, meron po tayong nabibiling distilled water, you can use that or you can make use of tap water provided po na potable po yung water nyo sa in your area. Pwede ko na po bang ipakain yung galing sa ref? Let the formula reach room temperature. Okay, um, huwag ka magpapakain diretso sa ref dahil baka magkaroon ng gastrointestinal upset ang pasyente. Ano po ba yung ibig sabihin ng 6 equal feeding dito sa guide? Ang ibig po sabihin ng 6 equal feeding, yung pong tinimplan yung pagkain, ipapakain po natin siya anim na beses sa maghapon. Okay, may interval po to na 4 hours kada kain. Ma'am, meron po ba tayong schedule na dapat sundin? If follow na lang po natin yung schedule ni ma'am dito sa hospital, we will feed her 6 a.m., 10 a.m., at saka po 2 p.m. And then in the afternoon, ang pinaka-start po ng feeding niya is 6 p.m. ng gabi, 10 p.m., at saka po 2 a.m. Ma'am, gano po ba tayo katagal bago magpalit ng feeding container at tubings? We recommend the container and the tubing has to be replaced within 24 hours, and this is to prevent bacterial contamination. Paano po ba nililinis yung feeding container? Okay, kapag lilinisin nyo na po ang, ang feeding container, you don't...